I started this channel with the hopes to track my progress and hopefully help anyone out there who wants to learn from my mistakes. The big mistake that I made basically all of last month was trying out a ton of different softwares that just weren't right for the type of 3D modeling that I was doing. Now, while I see this as definitely a necessary part of the process, uh, it was a mistake just because of the amount of time that it took me. I think I could have streamlined a lot of things uh, if I had someone in the space who was a little bit ahead of me, which is exactly why I'm trying to make this video to inform you guys and hopefully give you, uh, you know, a streamlined way to figure out what software will be best for the type of projects that you're going to create. So the first thing I want to address is which software I actually spent my time learning. Uh, the first one was Tinkercad, the second one was SketchUp, and the third one was Fusion 360. And I do actually have first impressions of all these softwares that I will link to down below. The reason I picked those three softwares is because I had three categories that they had to check off. The first one is I wanted them to be free. Um, yes, I love free software, but also this meant that I could save any money that I might spend on a program that wasn't right, which I clearly learned that I'm bad at picking the software on the first try, uh, so I'm glad I did stick with just free software for this beginning stage of me learning how to 3D model. The second thing that I wanted them to check off is that they would have cloud-based storage. Um, I've just recently gone through a couple of computers and swapping over files and all that has been a giant headache, uh, and I know a lot of these programs had that capability, so I did look for programs that specifically had cloud-based storage so that I could use not only uh, on different computers that I have, but also if I go anywhere in the world and want to collaborate with people, uh, it will be easier to share the files that way. The third thing, and this might be the most important part, uh, was that they could easily export to the STL file type, which is what I currently use uh, for creating files for my 3D printer. The whole purpose of me learning how to 3D model was so that I could actually 3D print, uh, so having the file type be easily accessible and not have to go through a bunch of converter programs or whatever, uh, I just wanted it to be simple. Uh, all of these programs are like just one or two clicks in order to get that STL file so I could bring it into the slicer, uh, which was a huge plus, and so that was the third box that they had to check off for me to try them. All right, so jumping right into the softwares now, uh, the first one that we'll talk about is Tinkercad. And Tinkercad was awesome, especially as uh, one of the first tools that I used in the 3D space. I definitely think that if you are brand new to 3D modeling, if you've never done any like computer graphics, anything, uh, this would be a fantastic place to start. Basically what a web-based program is, uh, is one that you can just go to any internet browser and pull up and start using inside of the browser. So there's no program you have to download. Uh, and it's usually a little little bit lighter of a workload for your computer so even if you don't have the best computer uh, you can still use this program so like I said fantastic for learning how to model in the 3d space and the tutorials that they have were really mind-blowing uh, even breaking down very simple things like how to move the camera in a 3d space it was all built right into this one website uh, and just gave me a really quick guide on how to start my uh, journey into 3d modeling so definitely a ton of pros for Tinkercad but the thing that I learned as soon as I started to try to make my first uh, somewhat real 3D printing project for like the actual business side of what I was doing, uh, I quickly learned that there are a lot of creative limitations uh, inside of this program. Just meaning you can't be as exact as I would like to be, uh, and you basically have to use shapes that are pre-made to model anything that you're making inside of Tinkercad. So, uh, you know, it, it's uh, amazing for starting out, for wrapping your head around 3D modeling, but when it comes to creating like functional things that I wanted to be in the real world, uh, there was a lot of creative limitations that I had, uh, so I just wasn't able to continue on with this journey and so uh, it really wasn't for me and what I was doing. All right, moving right along into the second software that I used, which was SketchUp. Uh, and sadly, I really had high hopes for SketchUp as it would be like a next level to Tinkercad, uh, but I really was not impressed with SketchUp and probably only spent less than five hours in the tool uh, trying to learn it and understand what it was for, uh, just because it seemed like it made my life a lot more difficult than it needed to be. SketchUp is the tool that made me do a little bit of digging and made me understand that I was really looking for like a CAD type software, so computer-aided design, uh, not just a generic 3D modeling software or, you know, website or whatever. Uh, so that was some knowledge that I gained from, I'll call it this mistake, uh, but definitely wasn't impressed with, the, you know, the type of modeling that you could do in SketchUp. Now, I will say there's definitely a place and a, uh, you know, a, a reason for this software to exist, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who love this software uh, because it is great for, like, interior design and uh, uh, different types of, like, city planning and those types of things 
a much larger scale than what I'm doing. I'm using a 3D printer, which is like an eight by eight square, uh, but you could, you know, easily 3D model a full building or a city block inside of SketchUp, uh, especially with all like the huge library of 3D components that they have in there. Uh, so it is a very impressive website and it's really cool that it is free. But as far as, again, what I'm trying to do with a 3D printer, definitely not something that I will continue on using. And to use my MS Paint reference again, I would kind of say that this is the MS Paint of modeling in a 3D space. Uh, it does make it extremely quick to just kind of draw some lines and have a 3D element. You could definitely do that inside of other programs, but there was just something about SketchUp uh, that made things like feel so fluid and very quick uh, just to get an idea out of your head. So if, again, you're trying to collab with someone and you just need a 3D space to kind of model something quickly, uh, I probably would open up SketchUp and try it out for that. But as far as for a 3D modeling software uh, for 3D printing, uh, not quite what I was looking for. All right, and the third and last software that I'm gonna talk about in this video is Fusion 360. And this program I have been very quickly falling in love with uh, because it is exactly that program that I was looking for. Like I said, in SketchUp, I learned that I'm looking for a CAD type software and Fusion 360 is exactly that. Uh, I'm able to be as precise as I need to be. And it is very satisfying knowing that if I type in one inch to this program and then I go to my 3D printer and actually print that out, it's going to be one inch in real life as well. Uh, so there's a lot of confidence that a tool like that can give me. Now, funny enough, Fusion 360 is actually made by the same people who make Tinkercad, which is Autodesk, uh, and they carried over that amazing training, which is even more amazing inside of Fusion 360 uh, that they had inside of Tinkercad. Now, uh, inside of Fusion 360, they actually give you like the files that you can use, and they're all on the cloud storage, so it only takes a couple seconds to download them. Uh, I can rant and rave about that, which I actually already did in another video, so again, check the link in the description below if you want to see my first impressions uh, and showing how to access those trainings. Um, but yeah, just know that this tool is fantastic for the type of work that I'm trying to do, which again is like functional, practical things that you would have around your house or desk uh, that I'm trying to print and bring into the real world. The last thing that I'll say about this program, which is something I covered in that my first impressions video, uh, but it's just so fantastic I can't get over it, is that it actually saves your projects in different milestones uh, in all the different versions that you've saved it as. So uh, some of my projects are a little crazy and they have like 40 different versions of the save file. Uh, but that just means that I can go basically back in time at any point that I saved that file uh, and access it as it was. So if I, you know, start going down a path and I realize I'm kind of messing up the original intent for that project, uh, I can go right back to that, you know, whatever version I need to see uh, and open it back up and start out from there, which is such a time saver. I don't have to just stand there and hit control Z a million times, or if I close the program, I can actually go back to those older versions still uh, and access that and even see kind of my own uh, progression in the program. Some of those early files definitely do have like 40 50 versions uh, but some of my newer files only have uh, you know 5 to 10 because I've just been able to go back and actually learn the mistakes that I've made uh, which is a super valuable tool to be able to learn from your own mistakes because they're actually saved right there for you to see so yeah I'm really happy with fusion 360 uh, one last thing that I'll just throw out there is that it might not be the greatest I haven't done a lot of this so maybe don't take my word for it yet there will be more videos about this coming out in the future uh, but it might not be the greatest for like free form modeling uh, and if you are into freeform modeling, which is not something that I'm going to uh, jump into quite yet, uh, there is a tool out there called Blender 2.8, which was actually the first 3D modeling software that I jumped into, but that was far too complicated for uh, what I was looking to do. And again, it was more for like freeform uh, modeling, something that you could do similarly like with clay rather than uh, with like a CNC machine, which is more the type of design work that I'm going after. So like I said, if you'd like to check out any more of those tools or the softwares or my first impressions, I will put links to all of that down below. And I do want to make a point that all of these projects, I did actually print out some of the uh, things that I made in each of these softwares just to see if there'd be any problems with like the STL files or anything like that. Uh, I didn't have any problems personally, and I did actually use uh, ZYL filaments for all of those projects and all those prints that I did. Uh, I've been really in love with their filaments so far as, uh, you know, I've been able to buy them, get them in a reasonable amount of time uh, and get the exact type of filaments that I'm looking for. So if you'd like to check them out, you can do that in the description below as well. 